In this video, we're going to take a look at inverse trig functions. So let's begin with here, before we take a look at any of the graphs below, let's just quickly discuss the notation that we're going to use here to represent inverse trig functions. So we start off with y equals sine x. And if I want the inverse here of sine x, the way we represent that here is y equals arc sine x. Okay, and this would be the inverse here of sine x. And what I've got below is two graphs. So for the first one here, you might recognize this. This is y equals sine x. Okay, it might look a little bit different here. And the reason for that is because we've restricted the domain. So it now goes from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. And the reason we've done this here so that we have a one-to-one -one function, and hence the inverse will exist then, for y equals arc sine x. Okay, so what I've got over here then is the inverse. This is y equals arc sine x. Okay, now what you can clearly see here is y equals sine x. If I draw the line y equals x here, and then reflect y equals sine x in the line y equals x, we just simply get y equals arc sine x, okay? So it's just true for drawing an inverse here. All we do is reflect that in the line y equals x, okay? So what we need here is the domain and range for y equals arc sine x. So y equals arc sine x here. Let's just mention the domain. So for the domain here, and this is given as between minus 1 here and positive 1. Okay, so like we said, the domain goes from minus 1 to positive 1. Okay, and we do include those values. That's our domain. And then for the range here of y equals arc sine x, and what you can clearly see here is the range goes from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. Okay, so minus pi over 2. That's for arc sine x. To pi over 2. Okay, and there we have it. So that's everything we need there for the first inverse trig function, y equals arc sine x. Moving on to our next trig function now and its respective inverse here, we have y equals cosine of x. So for the inverse here, the way we represent that would be y equals arc cos x. Okay. What you can see here down below is a sketch of y equals arc cos x. And from our sketch here, we can deduce a few important points. So it intersects here with the y-axis at pi over 2. This point here would be pi over 2. And we can also deduce the domain and the range. So we start with the domain. So for the domain here, just looking at our graph, this would be between minus 1 and 1 then. Okay, that's going to be minus 1 to 1. And we do include those values. And then for the range here, again, just looking at our graph, and we can see that must be between 0 and pi there. Okay, so that's going to be between 0, that's arc cos x, and then pi. Okay, and then we have it. So that's the key bits that we need there for y equals arc cos x. And then finally, we take a look at our last trig function here and its respective inverse. So, what we've got here is the inverse of tan x. So we've got y equals tan x, and its inverse is given as y equals arc tan x there. Okay, this sketch here down below, this is for y equals arc tan x. Okay, so again we can deduce a few important points here about y equals arc tan x from our graph. So we need the domain and range. So for the domain here, from looking at our graph, well we can take any real value of x here. Okay, this would extend um, to the negative infinities and to the positive infinity. So in that case then the domain is any real value of x. Okay, so it's defined for all real values of x. So for the domain, that x belongs to the reals. Okay, so that's our domain. Now for the range, we just do the range here down below. And what I can see is the output here would be between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. But just notice here we have these asymptotes here. 
Okay, so these asymptotes here are at positive pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. So when we define the range here, we can include those values. Obviously, if they're an asymptote, it won't actually touch those points. Okay, so for the range then, we're between minus pi over 2. Strictly here, so we don't include those values, and this is for arc tan x. This is our range here. Again, this must be strict here, so it'd be positive pi over 2. Okay, so like we said here, note these red dotted lines, these are the asymptotes here. So pi over 2 and minus pi over 2 there give us our asymptotes. Okay, but there we have it. So that's everything we need there for y equals arc tan x. That brings us to the end of this video on the inverse trig functions. We're not really going to take a look at any kind of exam style questions for this as a topic. However, in the next video, we're going to take a look at exam revision for trig functions.